Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Sir Cedric Hardwick in tonight's presentation of... Suspense! Tonight, Autolite presents a story about the most infamous poisoner who ever lived. The Diary of Dr. Pritchard. Our star, Sir Cedric Hardwick. And ho, Harlow! Huh? Oh, hi, Mr. McSorley. Uh, why the sailors salute? Why, in commemoration of that intrepid explorer, Christopher Columbus, whose day is coming. But Autolite Day is here. Tis it no? Sure, today and every day, complete Autolite electrical systems, including the starting motor, distributor, generator, battery, coil, wire, and spark plugs, are being st- installed as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. And every unit and component part is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give the smoothest performance money can buy. Oh, Christopher Columbus had plenty of trouble because he insisted the world was round. Ah, but you'll never have trouble if you insist on Autolite original factory parts for your Autolite-equipped car. It pays because, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed... The Diary of Dr. Pritchard, a true story starring Sir Cedric Hardwick, and hoping once again to keep you in suspense. There we are, Lily. Now I want you to drink every drop. Will it taste nasty, Doctor? No, 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 not at all. A little sour, perhaps, that's all. To make you feel ever so much better. Hold your nose, if you like, and mind you every drop. Come along. Mm. Wasn't mm. so bad? Hmm? Not very nice, sir. Have to take the bitter with the sweet, hmm? Ha <laughs> <laughs> naughty girl. Too many treacle tarts, eh? Ah, uh, a touch of gastric annoyance. Well, well, we must be careful of our waistline. Hmm? Such a pretty waist. <laughs> I think I'm getting sleepy. Good. Good. Lie down. I'll cover you up. Uh, You're so good to me, Doctor. You're a good girl, Lily. You'll be tickled. (laughs) Stop. Good night, Lily. Sleep well. Um, Good night. Lily. Fifth of May. What a frightful thing. The upstairs maid passed away in her bed. She must have fallen asleep whilst reading, and I suppose the gaslight ignited the curtains. She burnt to death. Poor little Lily. It will be a great loss to Mrs. Pritchard. I shall have to wire her the first thing in the morning. Then it will be as well to engage a maid to replace Lily as soon as possible. After that, we had better move to a more suitable residence. But why, dear? Why must we move? I've been thinking about it for quite a long time, Mary. Whilst you were away, I made up my mind to suggest it, and now, after what happened to poor Lily... But it's been so lovely here... Especially for the children. I know, but there is my position, too. We owe it to ourselves to keep up appearances. Now, there's a delightful spot in Clarence's place. I'm sure you'll be very happy with it. Uh, all right, dear. If you think it for the best. Indeed, I do. The best for us all. Oh, are you going out, dear? Uh, yes, I, I have one or two patients to see. Well, before you go... I... I did want to talk to you about the new maid, Ellen. Oh? It was terribly sweet of you to engage her while I was with Mother. But... But? 
Well, I... I rather wonder whether she's exactly suitable. I, I mean, she does seem a little forward. Well, I hadn't noticed that. I find her character excellent and her appearance very pleasing. Well, yes, but... Uh... Mary, I, I think you'd better begin the arrangements for the movie. I shall be home in time for dinner. Goodbye, my dear. Ninth of May. Dear sweet Mary, how she does worry about every little detail. How can one man be so blessed with such a loving wife and family? I must provide only the best for them. I do hope that Mary likes the new house. I'm sure that she will once we are settled. Third of June. We are going to be very happy down here in Clarence Place. The children are adjusting themselves marvellously to their new surroundings. I was rather aggravated that the insurance company refused to pay compensation for the belongings of poor unfortunate Lily. A few trifling baubles which couldn't be found in her room. I almost received the impression that they suspected I was making a fraudulent claim. I shall change companies immediately. Must remember to prepare tonic for darling Mary. She seems rather tired lately. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Ellen. Everything all right today? Hmm? Oh, yes, sir. That's good. And what has Cook prepared for dinner? Eh? Something I'm sure you'll like, sir. Uh, by the way, sir, I, I forgot to thank you for the pretty things you left in my room the other day. They must have been awfully expensive. Not at all, my dear. You're a very obliging girl. <sighs> the baubles were nothing at all. Nothing. Um, where is Mrs. Pritchard? Upstairs, sir. She's not feeling very well. Took a lie down after tea. Dear me, I, I, I must run up. Ah, you're night off, isn't it, Ellen? <laughs> yes, sir. Quite. <laughs> I should know, shouldn't I? <laughs> Uh, I, I may have to go out myself later to see a patient. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, sir. Right you are, Ellen. Perhaps I can drop you off somewhere. Eh? Thank you, sir. Thanks awfully. Not at all. Uh, tell Cook I shall be ready for supper in ten minutes. Very good, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, well, what have we here? Oh, hello, Edward. Oh, now, this will never do. What seems to be the trouble, Mary? And I, I don't know. I just don't feel well. Nonsense. Have you been taking the tonic? Yes, dear. You know, I, I, I think that you're babying yourself. Hmm? A little, perhaps. <laughs> Out with it. Well, I, I really don't feel at all well, Edward. My head aches and I, well, I feel sick. Let's try a spoonful of tonic, hmm? Oh, must I, dear? It doesn't seem to really do any good. Now, 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 doctor knows best. Hmm? There's a sedative in here help you to relax. The moving must have been too much for you. Well, I, I suppose so. Sit up, dear. There. Uh, must, oh. must take care of my sweetheart, mustn't I? I shall have to go out later. I'll leave instructions with nurse to put the children to bed. I, I, I want you to rest. Yes, it would. Oh! What, dear? Oh, it, it's my stomach, I think. Now, 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 now try to rest. Uh, Cook will send you up some hot broth later. I shan't be late. I had a lovely evening, sir. I'm so glad, Ellen. Sir... Don't you think that I ought to go round to the service entrance? Oh, of course not, silly girl. I walked you home, didn't I? Oh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, before we go in, Ellen, uh, don't you think... Uh, someone will see. Oh, no, it's it's too dark here. <laughs> Your beard, it tickles. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was that? Richard, sir. Oh, Lord, she's been murdered. Go to your room, Ellen. Immediately. Mary. 
Mary, what's the matter, Mary? Oh, oh, the pain in my... Ah. Oh. My dear, you're wicked the whole house. Do try to control yourself. Oh. Oh. What's the matter with me? I, I'm so sick. Edward, what is it? Oh, more than likely acute indigestion nerves, you know. Oh. Edward, I, I'm frightened. Will I, will I die? Oh, oh, oh. oh, you old girl, you. Oh, you're as healthy as an ox. Now stop oh. worrying, hmm? We'll have you fit as a fiddle and right as rain in no time. Hmm? 10th of June. I am at my wit's end. Following her seizure a week ago, Mary seemed to improve. Then she came down again with terrible pain. My poor dear girl. She has sent for her mother, who's coming over from Edinburgh. I could not deny her wish. And I shall be overjoyed having Mrs. Taylor here. Some of our friends are talking about a consultation, in particular Dr. Gardner. I've given him my diagnosis. He seems to agree, but there is some doubt. Our house is a mournful place these days. I shall be so happy to see Mother. Hello, Mother. Welcome. Welcome. How is my sweetheart? Your wife is very, very ill, Edward. I want to talk to you about her. Yes? What are you up to, Edward? I beg your pardon? What's the matter with Mary? If I knew, do you think she'd be suffering the way she is? Now, listen to me. I telephoned Dr. Gardner and... This is extremely unethical, Mother. If my daughter dies, that'll be more unethical, Edward. She was perfectly well when she visited me last month. Perfectly. Now she is not. Do you find that unusual? Dr. Gardner doesn't quite agree with your diagnosis. He feels that it's not his place to interfere, but that Mary should have hospital attention. I think that I may be the better judge. I can't force you to listen to Dr. Gardner, Edward. But I'm staying here to look after Mary. Is that clear? If you feel it's your place... I shall be with her day and night. I'm going to prepare her food, everything. Oh. I see. I'm glad that you do, Edward. It'll make everything so much better. Tenth of June, 5 p.m. What an extraordinarily good woman is Mrs. Taylor. It relieves me of such a burden. Ah, motherhood. Like a tigress protecting her young. And I would have it no other way. I must do something for dear mother while she's here. Oh, afternoon, Dr. Pritchard. Lovely day. Lovely. I say, um, I need an ounce of Henley's tincture of aconine. An ounce? Oh, of course, doctor. <laughs> you must use quite a lot of that, doctor. Didn't you buy an ounce last month? Oh, yes, yes. I find it an excellent preparation for intestinal ailments. Oh, Glad to know about that. My wife... I really shouldn't administer it if I were you without medical supervision. It could be dangerous. Quite dangerous. Autolite is bringing you Sir Cedric Hardwick in... The Diary of Dr. Pritchard. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, that Christopher Columbus is sure a famous name. Sure it is, Mr. McSorley. Just like Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Why, complete Autolite electrical systems are used as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Columbus was a fine worker, Harlow. So is the Autolite electrical system. It goes to work the instant you turn on the ignition, and it keeps working every second your car is in operation. It works, too, when you blow your horn, play your radio, turn on your lights, or use your electric windshield wiper. Sounds mighty important, Harlow. And it is. So, friends... 
treat the electrical system of your car to a periodic checkup at your car dealers or at your nearest authorized Autolite service station, where you will find experts that know the electrical system of your car best. To locate your nearest authorized Autolite service station, look in the classified section of your telephone directory under Automobile Electrical Service or Telephone Western Union and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Sir Cedric Hardwick in Elliot Lewis's production of The Diary of Dr. Pritchard, a true story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Two days since Mother Taylor arrived, how splendid she has been. She idolizes Mary and doesn't move from her side night or day. I know that she couldn't be in better hands. For a little while, I wondered whether it might not be better to send Mary to hospital, but now I think not. She is already showing signs of improvement. How delighted I am to see the color returning to her cheeks. And how is the patient today? Oh, I feel ever so much better. Thank you, Edward. I'm so glad. Edward. Yes, my dear? Give me your hand. Mother has been talking to me about going to Edinburgh with her. Taking the children as well. Has she? Has she? Now I wonder why. Do you think she feels you need a change? I'm not going. My place is with you. We... We've never spoken much of these things, have we, dear? I don't quite... Well, I um... mean, here we are, 20 years married. One forgets that, doesn't one? Have you been happy? Have I made you happy? What an odd question. Oh, no, it isn't. I've tried to make Mother see that. She thinks that I'm not happy with you, but she's wrong. She's always been wrong. I love you, Edward. (coughs) I brought you supper, Mary. Oh. Well, well, now, doesn't that smell nice? Your appetite is improving, my dear. You'll be out of bed in no time. Yes, she will. Thanks to you. Eh, Mother? <laughs> Are we dining together? I'll be down presently. Good. Don't be long, will you? I'm famished. Fifteenth of June, 8 p.m. I really believe things are getting better. Mary finished every scrap of her food, and when I went up to say goodnight, she looked positively radiant. I must say that dinner with Mother was a pleasure, and very soon now all will be as it was before. Mother will be gone. I I think I shall go to the music hall tonight. It's the servant's night off, and I should like to get out of the house. It'll make a change after the strain I've been through. I know Mother will take care of Mary. I did what I could, Pritchard. I tried to reach you, but couldn't find you. I'm afraid it was too late anyway. How horrible. What could have happened? I don't know. Catalepsy, do you think, Gardner? The old lady has a history, you know. Yes, it's possible. Was she all right when you left her this evening? Quite. Does Mary know? No. She's asleep. Poor girl. Poor, poor girl. It'll be such a shock. I was on my way over to see how Mary was getting on. Friendly visit. I was alarmed when nobody answered the door, and then Mrs. Taylor somehow manages to come downstairs. Brave So I do hope she didn't suffer. Well, she died a few minutes later. She was in great pain, Pritchard. Frightful. Frightful. I don't know what this will do to Mary. Break it as gently as you can, won't you? Of course. Can I make you a whiskey? No, no, thank you. No, I'd better be off. Yes, yes. I say, um, about the death certificate, um, catalepsy, you think? I'm not sure. It was rather odd, almost as though... as though she had been drugged. Drugged? Oh, yes. Well, that's possible, you know. She had been in the habit of taking pills at night, insomnia, she called. Not a very good habit, I'm afraid. That might account for it, don't you think? It might. Well, please offer my condolences to Mrs. Pritchard. I'll drop by in a day or two. Awfully kind of you, Gardner. I'll see you to the door. (laughs) 
16th of June. In the midst of life, we are in death. How sorry a truth in our house. We are in mourning. A fine old lady has died. Mary took the news bravely, and once again we are together, alone. Twenty fifth of June. Dr. Gardner made the death certificate and mother was buried a week ago. I have been so occupied with my practice that I have had no chance of making entries until now. Dr. Gardner has been calling quite often to inquire about Mary. What a thoughtful man. We are fortunate indeed to have such a friend. After the tragic news, Mary has suffered a slight relapse, but it was to be expected. <laughs> Sixth of July. Little improvement in my dearest Mary's health. Last night a severe attack. Dr. Gardner is troubled and begs me to send her to hospital. What can I say? I know that we are all better off with her at home. It is for me to use all my medical knowledge to make things easier now. I cannot bear her agonies. It has gone too long. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Good afternoon. I have one or two prescriptions for you to fill. Very good, Doctor. Oh, and uh, I think you can add half an ounce of Henley's tincture of aconine. Goodness gracious, Doctor. Every indigestion case in the city must come to you for help. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not really so popular, you know. Still, still the medicine does serve its purpose. Hmm? <laughs> Sixth of July, seven p.m. I know my diagnosis is sound. I explained it to Doctor Gardner, and he must have been convinced. The children have gone to their aunts for the holidays. It is much better that way. Ellen has taken an egg flip to Mary. She eats so little nowadays. Doctor Pritchard, Doctor. Oh dear. <laughs> Ellen. Ellen, I have asked you to knock... I'm sorry, sir, but, but what I gave the madam, I, I tasted it. Why? Why did you taste it? I, I'm sorry, sir, she asked me to. It's awful, burning like... I, I don't think she should have it. It must have been bad or something. I feel awfully sick. Go downstairs, Ellen. <laughs> she oughtn't to drink it, sir. Now, now, she... I'll take care of it, Ellen. Go downstairs now. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you only took a sip, didn't you? Yes, sir, but... It... Well, ask Cook to give you a glass of milk. You'll be all right. I will. How annoying. Oh, Edward. Edward. Ellen tells me you're being very naughty. You won't take your egg flip, and you used to love them. It, it doesn't taste the way it... It, it burns my throat. I, I can't drink it. I can't. What am I going to do with you? You must take nourishment. This is so good for you, dear. Please, for me. Oh. Here, here. I'll sit you up. No, no, no. Now, I'll be all right. Now, now, now. I expect the children to behave this way, but not my Mary. Drink it up. Oh, no. It'll kill me, please. No, I can't. I can't. I'm afraid you must, my dear. Oh. That's a good girl. of July, 8 p.m. Tonight, my darling wife, Mary Jane Pritchard, passed from this life. Her last words were of love, and in her eyes was tenderness. How shall I live without her? What, what nobility and goodness she possessed. I cannot find words with which to describe my feelings at this moment. I do hope that Ellen is not indisposed, foolish little thing. She might have been very ill indeed, tasting what she did. What a tiny waist she has. 
and how she loves to stroke my beard. Ah, little Ellen. Dr. Pritchard. Ah. Good evening, Gardner. We've just come from the chemist shop, Pritchard. We know about your purchases there. Really? Tincture of aconine. That's what you used, isn't it? I should have known, I should have known that's what killed Mrs. Taylor. And no, your... no, no, Dr. Gordon, I'll take care of this. Your wife is dead, Dr. Pritchard. I warn you that anything you say may be taken down and given in evidence against you. I imagine it will be. Why? Why did you kill them? So many reasons. All things considered, I thought it for the best. You probably wouldn't understand. I shall have to ask you to come along to the station with me, sir. Oh. Yes. Yes, of course. I wonder, though, if you'd mind waiting for just one moment. I I have one last entry to make in my diary. Mary, my darling, and you, Mother Taylor, soon, quite soon, we shall meet in happier circumstances in a far happier place. How could it be otherwise? I have no fear. Only regret that no one will know my last thoughts. I close this entry with these words to whom it may concern. For he who lives more lives than one, more deaths than one must die. Suspense. A true story presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Sir Cedric Hardwick. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and in still other Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, an award-winning actor with another award-winning performance, Mr. Richard Widmark, in the true story of a man alone on an atom-bombed island, will be heard on... Suspense! The Diary of Dr. Pritchard was written for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Suspense was transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis. Music was written by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in tonight's cast were Paula Winslow, Alma Lawton, Georgia Ellis, Norma Varden, William Johnstone, Ben Wright, and Joseph Kearns. Sir Cedric Hardwick may be seen in the fall tour of the first drama quartet's presentation of Don Juan in Hell by George Bernard Shaw. You can buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite stay full batteries, and Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.